On June 23, 2022, our research trials were hit by a substantial hailstorm. The main farm site was hit the hardest, where we had trials consisting of oats, wheat, barley, canary seed, and flax. The cereals looked awful, but the flax was small and flexible and didn't look too bad. Our off-farm site also received hail, but it was a little less intense. At that site, we had flax which looked fine, faba beans and camelina which, well, looked badly injured, and peas which didn't look too bad. The canola was alright as well, as it was at a very young stage, and I knew it would be fine. Seeding dates for the trials varied from May 5th to June 6th. The stage of the cereals varied greatly between trials. Now, not wanting to let a good crisis go to waste, I thought I would try to document the recovery of the various crops, and try to get a sense of how the crops at various stages recovered. Now this presentation is of our experience with hail at the farm and is more of a story than a something with scientific rigor. However, at the end of the story, you may feel you have learned something, even if you haven't. The problem is that there are too many confounding factors, as each trial has its own unique series of treatments. However, I would say most crops recovered well, as our final yields were quite high. Except for the faba beans. I was hoping to see a trend where late seeded crops would yield more. A late seeded crop would be at a younger stage and more resilient to hail. This trend appeared to be the case for wheat as the late seeded, less advanced wheat was higher yielding. The trend was mostly apparent for the oats as well, with one trial yield bucking the trend. The trend was the opposite for barley, as late seeded, less advanced barley tended to be lower yielding. You see, there's two opposing factors at work here determining yield. While late seeded younger plants may suffer less damage from hail, seeding later also tends to reduce the yield potential. This is particularly true for barley because of its sensitivity to the photoperiod effect. Of course, each one of these trials also has its own unique series of treatments which would confound the relationship between plant growth stage and resilience to hail damage. However, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, so, well, let's look at a thousand pictures here and see how the various crops recovered from hail. I only live a couple of kilometers from the research farm. When I saw the condition of my potatoes, I quickly raced out to the research farm to assess the carnage. It was hard not to be discouraged. I kept reminding myself that I'd been here before, and things didn't turn out as bad as I had expected. It was late June 2008, and a field of canola I was scouting was badly damaged by hail at early flower. The crop looked like it had been mowed to the ground, but it came back. Don't get me wrong, it probably still lost at least 30% of its yield, but it still managed to produce 30 bushels per acre in the end. Some of the broken branches produced flowers and pods, even though there was only a tiny thin strip of green skin that kept it attached to the main part of the plant. But faced with my current reality, all I could do was hope for the best and take pictures. Here is what an earlier seeded and a later seeded wheat trial looked like a couple days before the hail event. You can see the wheat planted on May 6 on the left is clearly more advanced than the wheat seeded May 12. Here's the early seeded wheat a few days after the hail event. It still looks pretty beat up. A lot of the main stems were cut off below the developing heads. In the picture to the right, you can see the tiny awns poking through one of the broken stems. A close-up picture taken later in the season reveals some straw-colored main stems that were killed by hail. But the plants have compensated for their loss by sending up new tillers. In the end, very respectable yields of 69 bushels per acre were achieved for the early seeded crop and 76 bushels per acre for the wheat seeded later. Let's take a look at the oak trials, where there was a greater difference in seeding date. Just before the hail event, you can see there was a big difference in the crop development between an oak trial seeded on May 5th on the left and one seeded on May 24th. The oats, which were less advanced at the time of hail, did yield more, 
but the difference was only 5 bushels per acre. Remember, there's two opposing factors at play on yield. While the less advanced oats are more resilient to hail, seeding late generally reduces yield potential. Here's how the more advanced oats looked a few days after the hail. Many of the main stems were cut below the developing heads. Later in the season, you can see some of the original main stems for the earlier seeded oats have died and are now straw colored. To compensate for their loss, the plants tillered. Dead main stems were not as apparent in the later seeded oats. Most of them likely survived because the plants were less advanced when the hail occurred. In the end, both the early and late seeded oats yielded reasonably well, 131 bushels per acre for the early seeded and 136 bushels per acre for the late seeded. Again, one must consider the opposing factors on yield. Late seeded oats were more resilient to hail, but inherently had a lower yield potential. The maturity of the early seeded oats was clearly delayed a lot by the hail, as it largely had to start again with new tillers. Even though the early seeded oats were seeded 19 days before the late seeded oats, I was still able to harvest the late seeded oats first, three days before the early seeded oats. Let's look at how some of the broadleaf crops fared with the hail. Flax was really resistant to hail. This picture was taken four days after the hail, and there's little damage to observe. The flax was already standing back up. In the end, the trial averaged 39 bushels per acre. Faba beans with their big succulent stems didn't seem to handle the hail very well. In the end, we only produced 36 bushels per acre, which is pretty awful for faba beans, especially when you consider the good growing conditions. A local faba bean producer agreed that faba bean don't handle hail very well. However, to be fair, the faba beans in our trials had a couple of other issues. If you look closely at this picture, you will see some leaf notching, which indicates we had pea leaf weevil. Here's a picture taken later in the year that shows some of the more obvious leaf notching. The larvae of the pea leaf weevil feed on the root nodules, thereby reducing end fertility. Here's a picture of the pea leaf weevil I found in the peas and the associated damage to the pea nodules. They are brown and empty instead of pink. Anyway, it was too late to spray for this insect in the faba beans when the problem was noticed as the eggs and the hatching larvae would have been underground and killing the adults above ground would not have been helpful. In addition, blister beetles were feeding on the flowers. There's no established economic threshold for blister beetles in faba beans and they're not usually considered an issue as they're patchy and they tend to move on fairly quickly. However, I think in research trials they are more damaging because they are fairly mobile and field populations can concentrate on small trials. Camelina also looked fairly rough a few days after the hail. However, it was able to tiller from buds at the base of the plant. By the end of the year, Camelina yielded 42 bushels per acre, which I thought was pretty good. For comparison, we had some late seeded canola planted on June 6 in the same field, which yielded 57 bushels per acre. It was at a very young stage when the hail occurred, and so the canola wasn't heavily damaged. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's more of a story than a presentation of research results. It's hard to do research on hail damage. However, I would direct you to some research that has been conducted by Farming Smarter out of Southern Alberta. They have simulated hail for a number of trials using a rotating drum of chains. They have done some testing to determine yield losses associated with various intensities of damage, and they've looked at the efficacy of various products to help with crop recovery. You might want to check them out. Uh, they have a number of YouTube videos on hail damage. Anyway, that's it for me.